Welcome in the fifth section of our course. In this section, we will learn how TypeScript advanced classes work and also we'll be calling REST. So firstly, we'll start from using mixins for adding behavior to existing code base. So we will try to overcome the limitations of JavaScript and TypeScript by using mixins. Next, we'll be using decorators for creating Fluent API. We will see how to intercept calls without changing an actual method. In the third video, we will see a very useful use case, use case when we have a lot of modules and we want to load them conditionally. So if some module want to be loaded and other not, so optional modules loading will be taken into account. In the last video, we will see how to call REST services from TypeScript code. And this is a first video of our fifth section, and we'll be using mixins for adding behavior to existing code base. We'll start from understanding inheritance principles in TypeScript and JavaScript, because they are the same, and then we will see how to overcome those problems and limitations by using mixins. So let's start from a simple example. Let's say we have a class A and B. Then we want to create a class user that extends A and B. We are not able to do it in JavaScript. TypeScript will tell us that classes can only extend a single class. So we are limited to inheritance from only one class. To overcome that problem, we can create a mixing. Mixing is a function that takes constructor, creates a class that extends that constructor with new functionality and returns new class. So firstly, we will create a type for mixing. Type our mix will be called constructor and it will take a type that is generic type and it takes a map of things. So this is a basically object. It will return a new constructor of arguments of any type that returns type T. This is somewhat complicated, but you will see how that works on the specific example. Let's start from the use case. So let's say we have a simple class user that clicked our ad and that user has only name and that name is John Wick. Then we want to assign pay-per-click advertisement to that user that clicked and let's see how to make it. So pay-per-click advertisement is a function that takes some parameterized T base that extends constructor. So our class should have constructor on it. And we are taking an argument that is of a T base. In our first example, it will be user that clicked. Then we are just extending our base, our user that clicked with a cost of 150. So this is our purple click advertisement. And it will give us the extension of our base class. So right now that paper click will have name and cost. So this is an example where we are creating paper click and we can see that it has name field and cost. Name is taken from the user that clicked and cost from the paper click ad. But we can go even one step further. We can create ad activator that is activating advertisement on the user that clicked and then it is wrapped into our cost of advertisement. So let's see how ad activator does look like. So ad activator is another function that is also taking T base, so our parameterized type that extends constructor and has an argument of a base T base. Next, it creates new class that extends our base. In this example, it could be our user or even our pay-per-click advertisement. And it has only one field is activated. And we can set that this field should be activated by calling activate method and deactivate it. So we can see that we can also add methods via mixing. So here we are creating add activator on the user that clicked. So right now that type should have activate methods and at the end we are giving cost of that advertisement to it. So here is a use case. We are creating new activated pay-per-click ad. Then we can see that this activated has cost, has flag is activated. We can call activate on it. And after that, 
our is activated should return true. So to test this, we can take a generated JavaScript. We can see that this JavaScript is quite complex. It's, it's not so simple because mixins are powerful, but also has a lot of overhead. So let's copy that JavaScript code and pass it here. So we can see that it returns John Wick 150, then 150 again, false and true. So after we will activate it between false and true, we can see that our flag changed. So our code works as expected, and we were able to add the behavior to the user that clicked. And everything is dynamic. We don't need to extend that class, so we are not stick to single class extension.